Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you Sweeper. Sweeper is a useful script that optimizes your Windows install. It also does a bunch of other tasks. Let's start. This is the readme file. This contains some useful information. Make sure to read it before using the tool. So, this is how it looks like when you open the program. You first get the console window and then another window will open. As you can see, there are a lot of options available. There is even a theme switch. This is the light mode. This is the dark mode. Let's try download center first. As you can see, we have a lot of useful programs here. I'll download Rufus. There is an option called Direct Download, which is enabled by default. If that's enabled, it will just download the file and save it to the location that you just selected. If that isn't enabled, it will open a browser window, which will download the file for you. When you download a zip file, it will show you the password of the zip file inside a message box, as you can see. Funny enough, it has a zip file inside the zip file. This isn't an issue with the zip file. This is Windows, which has issues supporting password protected archives. The zip file includes both the older Rufus version to make Windows 7 USBs and a newer Rufus version. The older version works fine. The newer Rufus version works too. Let's try the remove junk files. Option next. I'll first delete my Rufus and I'll open some folders to prove you that it actually deletes junk files. Here you have a list of all the directories that you can clean. I'm just going to clean them all, but maybe check your recycle bin if you didn't delete something accidentally. Okay, it says that all the junk files are deleted. The recycle bin is empty. Temp is cleaned, but some files are in use. Same here. Prefetch is also cleaned. It did a great job. Let's try the Optimize Drives option. That error is normal since I'm using a virtual machine, but on real hardware you won't get this error. So this works perfectly fine. 
let's optimize the performance settings. This gives you a list of what options to optimize. Some of them might increase the power consumption on your laptop in order to provide better performance. Keep that in mind. I have to note that it disables the user account control thing, so it doesn't have to ask permission for every single thing. You will have to re-enable that manually. Alright, let's try the debloat option next. I'm not actually going to try this on this VM since, as you can see, it's already debloated. I'll grab myself a bloated VM for that. Welcome to my very very slow VM. Let's debloat this thing. I'm also applying the registry tweaks, I'm pretty sure they are useful. I'm also applying the registry tweaks, I'm pretty sure they are useful. Okay, it says that it deleted 30 apps. Let's check if that's true. I'm not actually going to count them. I'm just going to check if this system is debloated. It's debloated. The performance is already better. The VM feels smoother. Let's try network reset. This option might help if you have internet issues. I'm blurring my IP of course, since I'm not in the mood for attack. It's finished. You have to restart your computer for the changes to take effect. I'm not going to do this right now. Let's try the network info option. I'm going to blur that too of course. So, this shows the hardware information. I have no battery, but it should show the battery data too. Since I want to test it, let's try it out on a real laptop. Normally, this laptop runs Windows 8.1, but I swapped the SSD and installed Windows 10 for this video. I have to debloat it with Sweeper 2. Data not found? That's weird. Maybe it's because the laptop is plugged thing. Maybe I should unplug it and tr try this again.
Let's do that. Nope, still data not found. Well, what's the problem here? It's not related to the software, it's related to the battery. Let me show you. So basically, the script executes a CMD command power CFG slash battery report. Let's go ahead and do that. That comment saves an XML file to the location where you opened CMD. In this case, it's System32. Although that's not a good location, my bad. As you can see, the design capacity and the full charge capacity doesn't have any numbers here, as well as the cycle count. Why is that? Because the battery doesn't support monitoring tools. That's because it's a cheap laptop. I don't have any other laptop right here to test it, so I'll leave it like that. That explains the error. Let's try the reboot to BIOS option. I'm doing this on real hardware too. You need a UEFI system for that. If you try this on legacy BIOS firmware, you get this error message. By the way, I'm using a capture card to record this. So that's how I record the BIOS. We booked it into the BIOS so it works. Let's test the reboot in the Windows. RE option. And we are in the recovery environment. This, this works fine. Let's try the delay shutdown option next. Seems like that works. Great! I'm cancelling this shutdown though. Let's try the MRT scan. My VM didn't have MRT installed, so let's move on with a VM that has MRT. That works fine. Back to a SFC scan. I'm actually going to skip this. Let's try the DISM scan. Actually, I'm going to skip that too. And now, let's try the Windows Firewall option. It works. I'm not recommending disabling firewall though. It's a security risk. Let's try the window security option. Let's try the windows update option. Let's disable updates. By the way, the changes will be applied after a reboot. Let's re-enable them. The 
let's show the advanced options. Well, let's lock it with a password, which I'm not going to show you. For experienced users, it's very easy to find. Why I'm not showing the password? Well, because these options are still under development and they might be not as stable as the other options. So be careful if you manage to find the password and you want to use the options. I'm going to blur the password. As you can see, you have some pretty cool features. Let's try to The God Mode feature is really cool. There is one last thing to show you. How to change this config. There is a config dot any file in the bin folder here. Here it is. You just open that with Notepad, and here you can change the settings. You can set a parameter. By default, it's set to a laptop, but you can set the desktop too. And here you can change the size of the window. And that's pretty much all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this program. If you have any question or suggestion, all welcome. I want to thank you all so much for watching and I see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.